Hello everyone, today we have Phil Graf all the way from America. He's been here in Nepal since one week. He's a great coach in America and he does a lot of coaching classes. And today we're going to hear from him some of the secrets about effective coaching that makes a lot of difference to young people, old people and also cross-cultural people. Just to help them to you know, empower them to overcome the difficulties of life and to you know, just run their life. Uh, normally and help someone to discover their problems and how to overcome over those problems. Phil, we just want to welcome you. Try must see. Yeah. You said that uh, you are coach. I am. And you have been coaching since 1991. That is true. So can you tell us something about what inspired you to become a coach? Yeah, I value empowering others. Yes. And I realized painfully that I am an addicted teller. Okay. I was raised to give answers. I was raised to solve problems for people. And I learned through a mentor yeah. that asking powerful questions yeah. is the key to empowering someone else, not giving answers. So you told that you are most of the time spending just telling, but then not asking. Before 1991. Before 1991. Yes. So, what does that really mean? Because the guys who does, doesn't know any secrets about coaching or who doesn't know any differences between the telling and asking and the advantages, they might not know about it. So, can you elaborate what you are saying about this telling and coaching thing? Well, the first thing that that means is that I'm an old man. Yeah. Because if I've been coaching for 38 years, yeah. that makes me a, a very old man. But yeah, it's <clears throat> when you think about the impact that you want your life to have. You certainly want to have influence. Most people would love to be able to influence uh, somebody else or make an impact uh, on the world with the days that they have to breathe here on earth. Um, looking at Jesus' model, Jesus' way of life, he certainly, there wasn't anything he didn't know, but he asked so many questions of so many different people, so many different times in a few short years. And the impact of those questions and unlocking the learning that's inside somebody else made such an impact in the people that he interacted with that 2,000 years later, we are still doing something like what he was doing 2,000 years ago. So yes, I mean asking questions are very important even if you want to become a good researcher or you want to become a good uh, explorer or you want to become a good scientist, it's always helpful to ask questions. But you said you are a coach and what does asking questions make you a better coach? I have actually coached people who have run CEOs I've coached people who have run construction companies. Uh, I've coached uh, people who are medical doctors. Um, I've certainly coached a whole lot of pastors and other people. But in those first three worlds, I have never run a corporation. I know nothing about construction, and I'm not a doctor. I know nothing about surgery. So you might ask, Phil, how do you coach people in stuff you don't know anything about? And it is through the skill of active listening and through powerful questions, you don't have to know anything about the issue or the problem or the industry that they're in. You're helping them discover the pathway forward. You're not showing them the pathway forward. If I were to show them the pathway forward, I'd have to be an expert in their field. I have learned to become a pretty good coach by listening and asking powerful questions and the person finds their way forward through those questions and through some action steps uh, they're able to keep moving forward and get unstuck. So initially how did you start coaching? Like did you start from you know coaching some? I went to a training, okay. uh, core coaching skills. Dr. Keith Webb had a okay. profound impact on me. Dr. Okay. Dave DeVries had a profound impact on me and Steve Ogney had a profound impact on me. All three are excellent coaches and have had uh, years and years of experience. 
I went to one 60 hour class and I have been practicing coaching ever since. I have about 1200 hours of coaching. So that's, that's a lot of conversations over a lot of years. Okay, you said that uh, you have been taking coaching classes from these experienced guys like who came up with some kind of coaching, you know, formulas or some kind of coaching sessions in America. Like they are making a lot of influences even in the life of other coaches. So what I really want to know is how did you actually wanted to get involved with the coaching? I mean, what inspired you? So I've been just trying to ask you questions from the beginning itself. Like what made you to go to these coaching classes and take courses from this influenced leaders To make the greatest impact I can make. Okay, so you said you wanted to make a greatest impact. So who could be your targeted people whom you want to make a greatest impact? Leaders. Leaders. So you want to develop leaders out of a normal people? I believe everyone is a leader. I believe everyone is created in God's image and yeah. I believe that I can help unlock the giftedness that that God has deposited inside them. I believe most people are living very, very small lives. Uh, most people are pretty bored uh, and feel like they don't have much purpose, don't have much influence. And through coaching, you can unlock a lot of inspiration, a lot of learning that results in a pretty big impact. Okay, so you are saying me that a coaching is related to unlocking what is inside the person's heart, mm -hmm. right? So sometimes people do not know what they are here for. Like, they might have some problems, but they really do not know what are the reasons behind the problem. Mm -hmm. So you are saying that. So you want the people to, you know, unlock the reasons of the problems and also come up with the solutions? Well, let's make it personal. Okay. I coach you, okay. right? Okay. So what has been the impact of my coaching in your life? So. After I got some coaching sessions from you, mm -hmm. whenever I see people filled with some problems, you know, what you said was uh, amazing thing like asking questions. Mm -hmm. So when I started asking questions, then people started wondering and they started giving answers. And they, some of the people, they realized the reasons behind the problem they were suffering. And some of the people also came up with some kind of action steps, like mm -hmm. how they could solve some kind of problems or how they can't get over that kind of problems so I found out that coaching has somehow impacted me but then what I'm saying you is besides unlocking stops and besides you being inspired and besides you're being you're coaching people so you want to always develop a leadership in them because you think that every person is a leader right but how kind of leader are they are they leading other people or are there some uh, people who are in connection with some kind of areas like it may be politics, it may be education, it may be uh, religious stuff. So are you trying to make leaders in these areas or what is it? Or do you want them to be leaders in their personal lives? You are a small example to the earlier question you asked about impact. I don't know the people that you are coaching, but because I've coached you and you've seen the power of coaching in your life, you are now passing it on to others. So that is a bigger impact than me just impacting one on one on one. So rather than go by addition, coaching allows you to go by multiplication. The answer to the question you just asked is I've coached all kinds of people. So they they come to me from a variety of uh, areas. When I lived in Europe, in, uh, in Amsterdam for four years, uh, I, coached, uh, I coached teachers, I coached uh, pastors, I coached uh, people in the uh, entrepreneurial uh, industry, I coached venture capitalists, um, I coached people in 17 different countries. Um, so some coaching is face to face, some coaching is through the technology that we have available today. Um, it is more a way of life than it is uh, some technique. Uh, although there is things that you can learn, but at my core, the way that God wired me, 
uh, I am a coach. My kids will say, Dad, I, I, I want to talk to you, but don't coach me. So I coach at, at a lifestyle rather than a scheduled appointment. And I do have scheduled appointments, uh, i.e. Thomas. Yeah. <laughs> so we just heard that past Phil is a great coach, but he also has been learning from a great mastermind called Keith Week, who came up with something called Coach. A coach is an abbreviated form that Keith Webb used to explain about what a coaching is. So right now what I want Pastor Phil to explain about the coach, you know, just explain us about the coach abbreviated forms and just explain what is it all about in steps wise. Yeah, that's a good question. So one of the things that we initially do in any coaching session is connect with the person. That is C. That, well, so there is a wheel that actually spells coach, C-O-A-C-H. This first C is to connect. Yeah. That's a shorter period of time, but you don't just drop in and say, hey, what do you want to talk about? Uh, there's a little bit of connection. But one of the things that distinguishes a coaching session versus a everyday casual conversation and sometimes a coaching session develops out of a casual conversation but we're looking for a specific result that you want to take away uh, an, an action that you want to see different than exists now uh, maybe it's an issue where you're stuck and don't know what to do so we're gaining uh, an understanding of the result you want to take away. And that, cr that causes a, a part of the conversation to move into awareness. Yeah. Because lots of times people don't know what is the real core issue. They begin with an issue and you, you can think that that's the issue, but as you gain awareness, which is the A in the coaching wheel, um, you might discover a more specific and deeper a result or outcome that you want to take away. And as the conversation develops and as you're gaining greater understanding and as you're asking powerful questions, yeah. people begin to come up with yeah. some options about what they think they can do. And then that is the course direction that they're gonna, gonna take. And then you ask them very specifically about those action steps and you want them to be specific and you want them to be measurable and you want them to be attainable. You don't want pie in the sky. You want them to be relevant to the issue at hand and you want them to have a, a deadline, a time dated uh, by when kind of thing. And when an action step is developed that way, uh, you then can uh, see powerful, powerful results in a pretty short period of time. Yeah. So sometimes when people give counseling or sometimes when people are giving coaching or sometimes when people are, you know, teaching people and to come up with some kind of uh, action steps, sometimes they're stuck, they actually don't have any idea. For example, you might become a motivational speaker from the stage, you may be speaking a lot of words and giving a lot of ideas, but then when you call those students in the sessions and just ask them about what are the action steps they can take. Uh, to come in your life so that you can fulfill a purpose, then they don't have any idea, they're stuck. So, Pastor Phil, how can we help those guys who are stuck and who do not know any idea and who do not have any action steps to co come up with, you know, to fulfill the purpose, to fulfill the aims? So, what is the coaching formula for that? We attempt to do less speaking and more listening as we do that and as we're asking open-ended questions and as learning is beginning to to be discovered uh, there can be that stuck time like you're talking about you can make a suggestion but always ask permission if uh, you have a good idea that you think you might want to share don't ever say do you know what i would do if i were you because you're not them so that ends that conversation but you can offer a suggestion but you want to follow that suggestion up by what other ideas does that trigger in you and then you're back to them being in in control of the conversation you don't want to dominate the conversation for those of you who are still listening and you realize that coach has a H at the end C O A C H the H is a highlight 
we can't assume what was most impactful in the conversation. They've got multiple action steps, but it's always fascinating to say what was, what was a, a takeaway for you? What was the highlight of our conversation? And I get to learn a lot about the way that they answer that question. But that's what spells the coaching wheel. So what I really liked about coaching is like not giving suggestions, you know, as usual leaders do. Mm -hmm. Like for example, if I go to some presidents, if I go to some failed leaders, or like people who do not know anything about asking, you know, they just know how to give suggestions and telling. Mm -hmm. So these guys are trying to plan their own ideas. Mm -hmm. So maybe the person who is listening or maybe the person who wants to, you know, uh, obtain what they dream of may not be having the same ideas and maybe they don't want to take that idea in them. So you want to have something that is already inside of them. So sometimes while giving a feedback, for example, what happens is like the idea which you give after they give you the permission which you share like some feedback. Mm -hmm. What if they don't like the feedback? Like, what is it going to happen? Nothing. They don't have to like it. Okay. I desire to understand. I resist demanding to be understood. So it's not my ideas that I want shared. I want you to discover your pathway forward. So you want me to understand the past, the forward ways, right? And I, want you to, and I want you to discover them and I can help you do that. So it seems like coach are like actually helpers, not the ones who is dictating us, making pathways for us, but then you are actually empowering those guys to make their own pathways, right? Okay, so as you listen, like coaching is a very important aspect that is happening in Western world, like they're giving coaching and the guys, very youth, they learn from the young age about coaching. And besides that, they also learn the skills of mentoring, uh, counseling, a lot of stuff that happen in their lives. But one thing that I really want to ask you is, how does coaching make person different? Or like say example, a leader, or a company, or a boss, or like a pastor, or a mentor, he even be, may, may become a counselor. Is he ready? to follow this coaching formula? Are they ready to listen to coaching thing? Like, instead of just telling, instead of just focusing on this sort of things, why don't we empower the person who really wants to be empowered and they realize their own way to the way forward, you know? So how are, the, how are you receiving the feedback from this kind of leaders, like mentors, teachers, pastors, and counselors? When you don't have yourself on your hands, when it's not about you, you have so much greater influence. Whether you do what you say you're going to do or not, that's on you. The second session is following up those action steps. So there's a little bit of accountability, but it's still not my job to fix your problem. It's still my, not my job to carry out your action steps. This is your life and coaching can help you realize what God has always intended for you to do and have the impact that you desire to have, coaching can assist with that in a very, very profound way. Okay. So every person has their own challenges and issues, you know? Mm -hmm. So what can be some of the challenges and issues of a coach? So because you have been coaching since 1991. How Many challenges have you faced? Can you just actually just tell us? What would be the possible challenges and issues that coaches, coaches may face, you know? Like there may be some legal stuff or like, you know, the dedication of the guy who is being coached. Yeah, there's not, there aren't challenges that way. Again, the coach is empowering or attempting to empower the one that is wanting coaching. Um, I guess for some people who want to make a living doing this, yeah. uh, there's a whole other conversation about how to charge and how to uh, uh, contractually enter into an agreement. Um, 
I don't, oh, I, I do receive funds for coaching, um, but I, I don't make my livelihood coaching. Uh, I coach a lot, but a lot of the coaching that I do is for free. Thomas doesn't pay me to coach him. Uh, I gift that coaching away. Um, there have been no legal implications in any of the coaching I've done for 38 years. Um, it is not counseling. It is not therapy. Uh, you do not have to be licensed. Uh, I do have certificates and accreditations, but uh, yeah. So most of the people, when they think about coach, to think about football, you know. So that's or, a great example. Or a basketball. Does so the can, coach can in football actually... or basketball play? No. They coach. The players have to play. Sometimes the players do what the coach tells them to do. That is not the coaching that we do. We don't tell anybody what to do. We ask them questions. They decide what it is that they want to do, and we assist them. So that's where it falls apart in the sports analogy. But where it does connect is that the coach doesn't play. So the coach coaches, the player plays. The coach coaches, and the coach E applies those action steps in his or her life. Yeah. So another aspect that I really want to get in touch is like you are involved in the ministry, right? Mm -hmm. So how does coaching impact your ministry? Like how has it been impacting your ministry? Leverage. Okay. You said it's a leverage. Can you just to give us some examples? The example is the example you gave. I coached you. Yeah. You saw the benefit. Now you're coaching other people. Okay. So you are saying about me getting benefit from the coaching sessions that I received from you. And I'm really grateful for that. <laughs> and I get that for free. But what I'm saying is in a ministry, how is it impacting in the, back in the U.S.? Well, there's no place it's not impacting. Perhaps you're not understanding, but I'm not doing the work, and the work's getting done. In our context, the kingdom is advancing, and I'm not doing it. I'm empowering somebody else to do it, and they're empowering somebody else. And this, I believe, it's what Jesus did. In your Bible, yeah. if you have a red-letter Bible where Jesus is in the red ink, yeah. circle all the question marks. He asked so many questions, and somehow people got it enough that 2,000 years later, we're still trying to do Jesus' way of life. Yeah, like when I went classes, like you said, that Jesus was in the temple, he was listening, and then he was asking questions, right? Mm -hmm. So listening is also important for coaches. It actually says that the, that the religious leaders were astounded not by the answers he was giving, they were astounded by the questions he was asking. And he was around 12 years old at the time. Okay, so you are saying that the guys who thought they were really intelligent, mm -hmm. if they don't ask questions, they're actually not learning. Because I can really find out from my examples, like if I don't have curiosity, if I don't have the questions to ask, and if I think that I know everything, I'm not going to learn anything. That's what some of the philosophers said. That the problem of the 21st century will not be someone who you know knew everything but mm -hmm. someone who someone who thinks who hasn't learned anything you know but he always keeps on learning because he thinks he needs to learn more because he still hasn't understood anything well in my case i had to relearn okay uh i had to unlearn and relearn and uh there has been an impact so you said before you were a sports coach, right? Yes, I've coached so, football and basketball, focus. American football and basketball. So what really happened in between? Like what made you to just shift into different coaching uh, uh, sessions and different coaching styles, you know, instead of just coaching and you're just continuing to coach the sports men rather than we people who are weak, who are involved in the ministry, who are in different professionals of life. What made you to take that really great shift well I was coaching I was already in ministry when I coached football to gain relationship with young people and I was already in ministry when I was coaching basketball to gain access to a high school that I I wanted to be able to influence students at so so there are various ways in which we usually give feedbacks or interact with the people while we're having discussions. Like if you want to comment some people, 
many of us, like many of the uh, teachers, they just told us some kind of aspect. Like first, just tell the positive aspect, and then you come up with a weaker aspect so that you do not offend the guy you are commenting on. But I believe that coaching has a different style. So Phil is going to actually highlight some of the ways in which we can give feedback. So Phil, can you uh, tell us something about coaching feedback? You always begin with what went well. Yeah. Then you move into what you want to see improved. And then the hard work is talking about how you're going to make those improvements the next time. What are the next steps you're going to do to make that improvement? Um, if you're in a team dynamic, it's always best to identify the wells of everyone on your team. And when you're in the improvement part of that, it's always good to volunteer your own improvements. Human nature is to say these are all the things that I did well and these are all the things you need to improve. That doesn't build a team. Uh, to create a powerful team, a healthy team, you identify all the things that went well in everybody else. And that can be exhaustive because even if something didn't go as well as you wanted and we want to talk about what went bad, if you'll resist that and talk about what went well, there is so much to celebrate. And then you're leaning positively into what you want to improve, not what stunk, what was terrible, what was horrible. It's what do we want to improve. That, that puts you future focused. And as you volunteer, I want to do this better, I want to do that better. Then the next is what are some ideas you have about how to make that improvement. It happens to spell in English win. Well, improve next is W-I-N, win. And when we do that, we see massive gains and big improvements in a very short period of time. So what amazes me about you is Phil, that just recently I took another coaching class, like for 12,000 rupees. That was I at least some paid some amount. But then you included about coaching sessions in your, you know, teaching materials. Mm -hmm. So. I'm really wondering why you are actually trying to teach this uh, coaching stuff in, for free, especially for guys like Nepalese and Africans and people all over the world. I don't know about Americans, whether they are paying for you for this uh, coaching uh, classes or not, but I'm really amazed like you are ready to teach this very expensive, it's very expensive in opera in Western nations, but you are doing it for free for Africans and Nepalese. Thomas, if you would like to pay me, I'd be happy to receive those rupees. <laughs> but it's my understanding that it would be very difficult for you to pay. So uh, in cultures where uh, the funds are available, um, I get paid very generously um, by people in the corporate world. Uh, when we are uh, in areas where people don't have financial resources available to them, I am happy to coach at whatever level of uh, funds they have available to them. I kind of coach on a sliding scale and there's a few people that I coach for free. Um, I find that if people pay, they get much more out of the coaching session than if they don't, even if it's a small amount. Um, but yeah. So recently what happened was I got a chance to take coaching sessions which were worth rupees lakh but I just paid about three to four thousand. The guy was from Australia and he was very generous. He arranged every stuff of coaching sessions for at least three to four thousand. So to have a guy like Phil uh, or to have a guy like John who is doing this great work is a great uh, privilege for me. I really want to thank you Phil for being here in the program. Just talking about the coaching sessions, you just gave some hints about what a coaching is and you just helped us to get more answers, to give feedback and to know about what a coaching will is about Keith Weep. So do you have anything to tell some guys out there who is watching you? Swagatam. <laughs> um, consider contacting Thomas and uh, see if coaching uh, it might be something that you would like to receive uh, and or coaching might be something that you would like to learn more about. Thanks for listening.
Thank you, sir. Thank you, Thomas.